thanks uh, to everyone for attending this conference and thanks for the organizers to uh, invite me and thanks for uh, Tarek for this uh, excellent presentation on NPS, which is my other field of expertise uh, besides uh, psychedelics. First, I have to show you this disclosure that I was only sponsored by my mom. Um, and uh, next, I would like to make an advertisement uh, of this uh, upcoming new journal of psychedelic studies, which is uh, uh, based in Hungary. It's a collaboration between three uh, universities and the Hungarian Academy of Science. So this will be a new uh, psychedelics uh, dedicated um, journal coming up this uh, autumn. And uh, we will invite some speakers from here to publish in the first um, uh, issue of this. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Levante Moro and uh, I'm uh, doing my PhD at the Center of Cognitive Neuroscience in Finland. Uh, but I'm based in uh, Hungary, in Budapest, and I'm the uh, current president of the Hungarian MAPS Association. And um, the reason I'm here, it's more like that I'm also the manager of the DAT.hu, it's the Hungarian Psychedelic Communities website. And uh, related to this uh, website and the community, um, we are doing also uh, psychedelic harm reduction. Um, and um, so the topic is the crisis intervention at psychedelic festivals. Um, you can see you can see the psychedelic festival, uh, how it looks like here. Uh, probably many of you have, have attended these types of events. And um, it, uh, it is based in the contemporary psychedelic subculture, uh, like electronic dance music events. And uh, it's like Goa, Psytrance, chill out types of uh, music uh, styles. Uh, there's a manifold higher prevalence of hallucinogenic drug use among the visitors of uh, these events. It has been uh, statistics by uh, studies and uh, research. Um, Hallucinogens, I mean, it's like uh, LSD, DMT, psilocybin, mescaline, these are uh, quite present uh, at these events. And uh, the set and setting is uh, actually ideal for drug use. You have lots of days, lots of supportive friends. So uh, actually these, uh, these life enriching experiences uh, can be very nice in a supportive environment. Uh, but there are substantial risks associated with uh, the ingestion of psychoactives. That's a fact. Um, so what is harm reduction at partisan festivals? Uh, there's an increased safety risks because of uh, isolated location of the festival. It's usually in the middle of nowhere. Um, there are harsh environmental conditions. It could be raining or very hot. Uh, there's outdoor phenomena such as creeping little insects and the other um, funny things. And the, of course the psychoactive substance use which is uh, uh, prevalent. So we ac uh, need definitely harm reduction in interventions. And uh, those uh, health services may include the distributing of drinking water, which is, which is very essential, like water works like magically in, uh, in, in any kind of uh, uh, altered state situation. It just boots up people very nicely. Um, we handle out substance information, which is uh, very important at the festivals, also about the substances that are present at the festival. Um, there's a first aid, usually provided by uh, professional, like um, ambulance crews or emergency crews, but um, there's a need also for psychological help, just to talk talk with um, people who have some um, difficult experiences, and there is some um, some services which uh, analyze drugs. And uh, in response to this uh, question, um, some of these uh, crews are using the uh, thin layer chromatography technique, which uh, means that you can separate the substances first before, of, uh, beco uh, before of these uh, colorimetric tests. So that is uh, how it works with combinations. Yes, and um, so this is our uh, my crew's uh, party harm reduction equipment. You can see what uh, services we provide. So first of all, the drinking water. Uh, with plastic cups, we provide the uh, magnesium and uh, some glucose. Um, just to, it's good, it's good for the muscles and uh, also for the brain. Uh, and the salty snacks, just to eat something up, uh, earplugs, condoms, sniffing tubes. Uh, so these are the basic harm reduction uh, things. Some first aid kit and um, drug information leaflets and and so on. The risks of psych uh, psychoactive drugs are are manifold. Um, you can see some some um, uh, small advertisements at uh, at a certain festival uh, in Hungary a few years back. You can actually see those uh, uh, new psychoactive substances appearing at the psychedelic festival as well. So you can see um, 
MDPV over there and AMT over there. They were in, in the uh, previous presentation as so, uh, novel psychoactives, um, uh, yes, in, in mixture with LSD and good hash and uh, other stuff. Uh, so um, there are impurities and dosing errors, misidentification of a white powder, uh, which can be another white powder, uh, interactions between drugs, drugs and alcohol, drugs and uh, medicals, um, and uh, people might not be fully healthy, so they might have uh, pre-existing medical conditions which they might know or might not know about, and uh, there's uh, usually a reckless attitude towards substance use makes uh, all of it worse. Um, so we, uh, they may cause uh, physical and or mental discomfort, so we definitely uh, need some help uh, because there, there might be very serious health consequences or accidents. Um, so psychedelic support services, this is uh, my crew, this uh, that to psy help team. Um, this, uh, these services are called the psychedelic support or a psy care or a psychedelic emergency services. Uh, uh, these are the generic names. So it's a specialized uh, type of harm reduction um, uh, for handling psychedelics-related emergencies and uh, uh, spiritual crises, which is a subtype I will talk about uh, briefly. Um, my crew has been working since uh, June 2013, and uh, currently we have uh, about uh, 47 volunteers uh, with two coordinators. I'm uh, one of them. And uh, in the three years we had been uh, attending uh, 86 parties and festivals, so it's, um, it's a very active um, crew. These are mostly in Hungary and uh, in Budapest mostly, and uh, then on the countryside, but we had been invited to international festivals as well uh, lately. Um, there's an international collaboration. Um, many of these things we adapted from, from uh, the Boom Cosmic Air team, uh, which is a marvelous team if you ever go to the uh, Boom Festival, then uh, you are welcome to visit it, not as a client uh, who is carried in, but uh, you can just drop by and, and see how it works uh, also this year. And um, so the types of emergencies that we have, um, we categorize to five different types. There's, uh, there are uh, medical uh, emergencies. Uh, these are like a threat to the bio biological body. Um, we have uh, psychological difficulties. These are more like uh, difficult processing of uh, emotional data, and um, it might uh, resolve with just some uh, uh, discussion with a with a helper. And um, there are psychiatric cases. Uh, these are mostly people with pre-existing uh, psychiatric uh, disorders who just attend the festival for some reason. Psychiatric people just love the festivals, um, and uh, they might get. Uh, uh, Either they don't take their regular medication in the festival environment or they just uh, might get uh, like a drug-triggered uh, acute psychosis uh, because they just try to experiment with uh, other um, like hallucinogens which might be quite close uh, structurally to their own medication. So they, uh, they might end up in a, in a worse condition that they <laughs> came in. Uh, and uh, there are the classical psychedelic uh, bad trips. Uh, this uh, we have the most. Uh, we actually shouldn't call them bad trips. They, we usually call them like difficult experiences because uh, they might uh, be like a roller coaster from from um, more difficult to less difficult. So it's uh, not uh, um, not bad in that sense that uh, there's uh, lots of space to make something good out of it uh, when processing properly. Uh, so these are hallucinatory and delu delusional perceptions of the world, of uh, the person's own body and. Uh, his or her mind. And uh, we have the spiritual crisis situations um, or spiritual emergencies, which are uh, by content, they are more like a religious or mystical. Uh, the person is pondering about the life and universe and everything. Um, and this, this is quite rare, but uh, we still have to be prepared for it uh, at uh, like psychedelic festivals. Um, so what is the psychedelic consciousness alteration as a process? Um, it happens mainly from uh, serotonergic hallucinogens like uh, LSD, psilocybin. Um, it's only a temporary alteration, uh, so there's a destabilization of the baseline uh, everyday consciousness state, and then a re-patterning temporarily to, um, to a, um, like a metastable uh, state of consciousness, which uh, then later uh, again destabilizes and uh, the basic uh, baseline uh, state of consciousness gets back. Um, so, um, 
there might be some looping or incoherent thought processes uh, present, and uh, there's an impairment of uh, short-term and long-term memory, although long-term memory can be the opposite, so some uh, old memories can surface, which uh, might not be that um, nice for the person. Um, there are hallucinations and delusions, and they, they may appear as real for the person. So in their uh, subjective reality, they are really like existing things, so it's quite hard to convince someone that, uh, that uh, he's only hallucinating or he has only delusions. It's, uh, it's quite uh, the opposite that uh, he or she experiences. And uh, attention may turn inwards or towards uh, unreal things. Um, that can happen also, and uh, there are repressed emotions or traumatic memories that uh, may surface under these uh, altered states, uh, and then it needs some uh, processing. And um, we should be prepared for very diminished rational uh, and verbal levels of interaction, so it's not always possible even to, to talk with the client. It could be in a condition that uh, there is no access verbally, it's only like just uh, in a very frightened state or something. So when you can talk with the client, then it's it's a kind of like a progress already. Um, so what uh, the client could be like? There's uh, anxiety or fear uh, present. Um, as I said, it's uh, it might be difficult to access verbally. Uh, you can't even figure out that what language the client speaks in the beginning when it's just like a looking like that. Um, so uh, they may. They may not tolerate uh, proximity, so it's not the first thing that you just hug them because they might just run away or just uh, uh, kill you at place. Uh, that, that didn't happen, actually, uh, ever. But um, you have to be very careful that uh, how much uh, bodily um, contact you can take uh, with the client. Uh, there is unpredictable behavior, so it's, uh, you can never be sure if, uh, that uh, someone is all right uh, because it, it might change from some... Show some environmental uh, stimulus, stimulus can trigger something, and then they just run away or something. So it's a, it's very unpredictable. Um, there are no ethical norms or and social rules, so you should be prepared that they they might uh, kick you or spit you or try to urinate on you. So it's uh, everything is possible. Um, there is a paranoia, catatonia, and stupor, and all other states. Uh, and or just disorientation, so they might not even tell you what they took and in what amount. Um, so a client case examples, um, there are naked people sitting, walking, running, and so on at every festival. Of course, it's the like the warm summer festivals and the hippie attitude uh, that you want to show your body parts. Uh, but um, this, is, this is actually not a big problem. You, it's, it, it indicates, although, that um, maybe the person is not fully aware that um, um, in what condition he or she is. And uh, the other thing is that uh, if there are like um, police uh, present at festivals, then they might not uh, appreciate uh, this uh, that much. And um, there are timeless long trips when there's a, a trip which is could be very good, but uh, after like eight or ten or twelve hours, uh, it uh, might be a bit uh, uh, annoying. And uh, people feel this timelessness uh, on hallucinogens, so they they think that they it will that that they uh, uh, it will never end. Five minutes. Oh. Okay. Mm. So um, yeah. So. There might be a crashing after long usage uh, of uh, stimulants mainly, so it's um, uh, in, um, after a few days uh, not sleeping and taking stimulants, uh, it, it, it can be very hard on the uh, body, so they might just crash and just sleep for, for a day. Um, it's a common situation when friends are lost at the festival and, and people get frightened uh, under the influence of something. Uh, there might be epileptic seizures, it's very rare, but um, like uh, stroboscopic lights might induce uh, epileptic seizures. Um, reckless dosage, it's when someone is pouring LSD on your uh, hand and then, oh, it, it was a little bit more, but I still lick it, uh, like, I don't know how many doses that uh, can happen on the dance floor. Um, there are uh, psychiatric patients, as I said, uh, they are a bit, uh, they are very hard cases because um, you have to, 
know if they are psychiatric patients and then uh, you might uh, have to be able to provide medication during the festival uh, and uh, then you might even have to evacuate them um, properly after the festival because they're not even able to, to get their stuff together and they, they don't know where to go. Uh, so these are problematic. Uh, there are some people who are just energetic, but the security uh, can't tell the difference between aggressive and energetic. So, so we, we need to make a diagnosis and say that, okay, he's okay, he's just sort of like uh, climbing on the decorations or something like that. Uh, and it, it's not, uh, not any kind of aggression. Um, uh, there are spiritual crises, as I said. It uh, happens rarely, but some people might uh, uh, have this uh, kind of, uh, um, like, uh, how should I say, uh, transpersonal or transcendent processing, and then they, uh, it, it's hard to tell apart from uh, psychiatric cases so, or psychosis, so this, is, this needs a very specialized uh, diagnosis, like uh, on site. Uh, there are these um, designer hallucinogens which might be on the blotter instead of uh, LSD. Um, Enbomies uh, give a more body load, uh, but uh, the DO substances, the psychedelic amphetamines, they actually um, they might cause very long trips, like uh, 16 to 24 hours, uh, and it might be frightening for the clients that, okay, what happens? So I usually come down uh, from uh, LSD after like 8, 10 hours, and this had been going on for, for a day or so. So this is uh, a situation which uh, uh, had happened at uh, many festivals. Um, and uh, there are freeloaders who actually not real clients, but uh, as they see a nice tent with uh, nice people around, then they uh, okay they are under some influence. But uh, if we ask them that okay, uh, are you in some kind of a crisis? Then they will get into a crisis, and then they can stay in the tent for a long time. Um, so this this also happens. We have to make a difference. Um, so how to help in psychedelic emergencies? Um, the cases can be managed with uh, somewhat similar methods. Um, the metabolic activity works for us, so it decreases the drug uh, levels and uh, gradually by time, so people will return to the baseline, basically. Um, so the helping process requires active uh, participation only for a few hours, uh, practically. And uh, first we have to convince the people to stay at the helping premises, and then uh, we should prevent uh, accidental injuries and uh, we should disadvise them from taking more drugs. Uh, that's also important because uh, more variables, it's a less predictable uh, outcome. Uh, so we need to provide a calming presence and occasional communications, not too much uh, actually is better. Um, uh, you shouldn't talk about abstract things with the clients, no, not too many questions and no negative associations that you could have died or something like that. Um, and uh, s simple verbal instructions are, are the best um, with these people. Uh, and the repeated reassurance that the trip will sure, surely end and uh, you will get back to the baseline. You might uh, have to tell it like in every minute for like an hour, but uh, this, this works as well. Um, what are the special requirements for helpers in these situations? The knowledge of first aid, handling emergency situations. Uh, oh, I, I counted two, but anyway. Um, uh, knowledge of psychoactive substances, uh, knowledge of altered mental states, um, and the psychological suitability, teamwork suitability, and client work suitability. And um, there's a list of psycho uh, psychological suitability for the helpers which I will uh, just uh, list, like openness, mental fitness, unselfishness, humility, self-control, tolerance, altruism, attachment, detachment from the client, discretion, uh, co-equality, pressure handling, and patience. Uh, and in half minute, I will tell about the PsyCare team at the Sci-Fi Festival here in the Netherlands. It was uh, last summer, and it will be also this summer. And uh, it has 15,000 visitors. It, it was an international collaboration between uh, uh, German, Dutch, and uh, Hungarian teams and uh, some other helpers. We had this uh, not so lovely military tent uh, uh, outside near a lake, which means in Holland it's, it's a swamp area. Um, and uh, but but in the inside it was uh, really uh, nice. So this was the cozy place uh, with the heaters and and uh, blankets and. Uh, uh, sofas. So basically, we, we filled out some documentation forms about our clients. We got uh, 83 cases documented, and uh, 
put it into the Excel table, and um, the statistics show these substances that we had to take care of, uh, or people under the influence of these, uh, LSD, MDMA uh, predominantly, and some, some others also, including some, some MPS. Um, and uh, from the cases I just... Yes. No. Uh, from the cases I just briefly mentioned, uh, uh, yelling and running naked at night, um, walking naked until mom came with a car and fetched. Um, <laughs> then uh, some people were kicked out from magic truffle ceremonies because they were bad energies, so they ended up at our tent. Um, and uh, there was some amphetamine binge after a few days that the person couldn't stop his muscles, this, uh, he has had to be uh, hospitalized just to be sure. Um, there are relationship breakups at the festival, uh, it's very typical, uh, so it might have some problems. And there's the Saturday tripping and Monday uh, hallucinogen related persistent uh, uh, perception disorder, so still some after effects after uh, using a hallucinogen and some contagious bad trip when someone sees a bad trip and then he gets a bad trip uh, from that. So like a, it's a trauma from seeing other people in bad condition. So all these things are collected uh, in our PsyHelp manual, um, which you can download in English, Hungarian and Finnish uh, from this website. You just Google PsyHelp manual and uh, thank you for your attention. We are monitoring the dance floor with my lovely girlfriend, and uh, thanks for your attention. On the festivals themselves, it's already very reassuring thought, so it's also a very preventive, uh, in a very preventive way, without doing actually um, to take care of um, set and setting. Uh, then the question: How do you experience the um, the balance or the amount of first-time or novel users and experienced users that come to the psycare? Uh, there are, of course, like uh, first-time trippers. Uh, it's more like uh, depending on the on the, um, their uh, friends and the, the group of people who are initiating this person into this uh, psychedelic culture. So if, if uh, anyone is surrounded by friends, then there it's a very uh, strong uh, uh, like a factor that, that it, it might be a good experience, and uh, even for first-timers. So it's, it's not uh, about being experienced, it's more like, uh, like having a, a strong support. Yeah, there's no special bias towards first-time users? Or um, not especially, not especially. First-timers are if they are initiated by friends, then it, it shouldn't be a, a special problem because the friends know the dosage. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I had a little question on the, the, the help kit. The magnesium, why is that inside? Uh, magnesium helps with the muscles. So people usually dance a lot and the, the magnesium is, uh, is helping with the muscles. Yeah. And some, it, it has some placebo effect as well. So people think, oh, I, I'm taking care of myself by taking magnesium, so I must be fine. Sorry? Uh, it's uh, like um, self-dissolving tablets into the water. Yeah. Hello. Uh, okay, thanks. That was amazing. Uh, could you say a little bit about the particular methods you use for timeless long trips and spiritual crises? In um, not related directly. The, the time as long trips are really like uh, uh, when there's an unknown uh, hallucinogen, which, which is not like the LSD duration of time. Uh, the spiritual crisis is not uh, typically related to the longness of, or, or the length of the... Uh, Sorry, no, I just mean what would you actually do to help somebody in that situation? Like somebody oh. feels like, oh, this is oh, okay, never going to stop. Yeah, uh, the spiritual crisis situation is uh, that you asked uh, that... Um, uh, it actually, we have to rely on the person that, that it's, it's his or her processing. So we don't want to interfere with any kind of our thoughts that, no, no, you're wrong or something like that. So it's, it's more like supportive and uh, he or she will figure out uh, for herself uh, or himself. Uh, so it, it, it needs just like uh, ears. We, we give some ears. And to get rid of the timelessness feeling? Yeah, the timelessness feeling, it, it's just uh, what I mentioned also, that it's the continuous reassurance that uh, 
yes, I know this feeling. Uh, it's because you're, you don't feel your body needs, like you don't have to eat, uh, drink, or pee pee. So you feel like uh, there's, time is not progressing to, uh, forward. But after some time, your biological uh, robot will, will also send some signals. And by, uh, from that, you, you will feel that, OK, there is time, because there are processes going on. And that, that uh, kind of naturally resolves the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you.